is Kaylor and I'm Amber Frost from Kajin Cosplay and today we are watching with you guys K Oh, wrong eye. <laughs> Code Geass episode 12. Yes, uh, last episode the battle was uh, ended. They won over Cornelia. Yeah, well, they almost got well, her too. Won over Cornelia. Well, she retreated. So Which they won. Both of them retreated technically, so yeah. Yeah, well, Lelouch ended up uh, facing Suzaku, who was about to take him in and stuff. And uh, C2 basically showed up, touched the nightmare like the Lancelot, and uh, she gave Suzaku like visions of his dad and stuff. So he, we saw a bit of his past. We think that there might be something like there's there's guilt there. Like he, it's like he's uh, blaming himself for his dad's death. Or something but he was saying I'm sorry and stuff and then you've got Lelouch who was just there and he, he put his end on C2 and he saw bits of her past and I'm pretty sure that Suzaku also saw Lelouch in his, in his flashes so Suzaku too so I'm like depending on Suzaku is not in a very good place right now so depending on how he's dealing with this he might remember as for Lelouch he didn't mention anything but we didn't really see him face Suzaku after that fight, so we don't know how they're gonna react to this. He also knows the, the actual name of C2 now. But we don't! Damn! Yes, so let's see if this episode we get to see the aftermath of this fight, because I'm pretty sure that Cornelia is pissed off. I don't <laughs> think that she's only pissed off, at least she's in a rage! Yeah, I guess so, that's what uh, happened. But she's still alive, so I mean she's coming back for sure. So let's see how they both deal with this. And let's see if Suzaku is okay, because uh, he wasn't last episode. Alright. Let's go! I mean, she got the kiss. That was wrong on so many levels. But... No, but uh, I mean, it's not wrong. It's just sudden. But I mean, she needed support. She was she in need... a vulnerable state, so yeah. that's why she kissed him. She... I mean, that's something. She loves him. She loves someone she loves. She's standing in front of Lelouch. She's very sad. She needs support. She needs help. He's just there. He doesn't know what to do. She reacted. She needed that support. It is kind of wrong, but... Her father was with Cornelia's army, though. I uh, know, he was... He, they said he was He was buried. It's not just soldiers that died on this mountain. Yeah, I know. It was people living there, people working there, just maybe random people walking on the mountain. I don't know. But it, was, it wasn't like an empty field. There were innocents there. Who is blowing that horn outside? <laughs> ah, anyway... But uh, so yeah, he's just a victim, and that's that's the very sad part of a story like this. You might want to fight for the right reasons, but as as soon as you fight, you know there will be casualties. When you got a war, there's always casualties. Yeah, of course. And you've got you know Suzaku standing there saying like, why do they cause all that violence and, and stuff? Lelouch is one of his problems is that yes, he. he I mean, he chooses violence, but he doesn't really understand. Or, I mean, if he does understand, he doesn't care, you know? He doesn't understand or care about all the consequences that his actions are going to cause. The death of innocent people. It's going to happen. If he has a choice, he's going to save the weak. Like, that's what he said. But his, his path will lead to casualties. Death. It's interesting now, because he knows someone who lost... You know, a very close person. Like, it's, it's our father's dead because of something he did. So he's gonna have to face this and maybe question his actions. I'm not. I don't think this is enough for him to to switch. You know, and change paths and just decide to change his entire plan and stuff. But um, it might be enough to make him reconsider in the future. It might come back. You know. But yeah, I mean, this is this is the sad part. If you are Suzaku and you take the path of peace, you have to accept the fact that you are going to be seen as weak or as a traitor by the people around you. You're going to be fighting with people that don't care, that they, they hate you, and you're going to be fighting against your people for the sake of peace. Yes, there will be, you know, deaths and, and innocents dying and stuff, but it might not be as extreme as Lelouch's way. But the worst for Suzaku is what happens to him, the way people will see him. 
As for Lelouch, his path is more... I mean, he's seen as the hero. He's seen as the guy who brings on the revolution. He's the guy who makes a change. So people want to fight with him because he's, he's a leader. They want to follow him. They want to do what he wants. This is great. But then you look at the details and you look at the casualties and it's well, terrible. to be fair with him, though, for all the things that he's done so far, mm. the only people that he kind of exterminate, if I can use that word, were criminals or were uh, Britannian soldiers in the army. Directly kills. Directly kills. We, yeah. we didn't see other kind of casualty because there were many fights. For yeah. that fight particularly though, he creates a landslide that kills innocent on the side. That's the thing. Because he wants to use big ways to get big results. The thing with Lelouch, you want I think... Conor, Conor, yeah, and win one against her. When he's in control, when he's got a plan, or, or when he's, uh, you know, when he knows he can win, you know, like, quite easily, he does things and he thinks about the innocents, and he, he does exactly what he says he's going to do, which is fight for the weak. But fighting against his sister, his sister is just as good, if not better, than he is. Like... In there, she's very good. She's got the knowledge, she's got the strategies, she's got the experience. Mm -hmm. So when he's fighting her, there is that bit of emotion, that edge that he doesn't have with the others. Because uh, he lost against her once. So he knew already that when he was going to fight her again, he needed to go big or go home. He was not going to win this if he didn't do something drastic. And it was also a test for his soldiers. So he needed to scare them off and, and make sure that if they stayed with them, it was because they wanted to, not because they thought it was cool. So he made something huge there because I think he was al almost backed up against a wall, kind of, with Cornelia. Because he felt like if he didn't do something big, he was not going to win. So his obsession with winning and his, his, his need to... To, su to succeed in his plan. That's what pushed him to do something like this. And when his... It's like the casualties versus his obsession with this, the obsession wins. So this is why this is going to be very interesting for him, to see how he deals, he handles the aftermath. Speaking of obsession and of needs... <laughs> Nina! <What>? Nina! Mm. <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> well, I mean, she, it's okay. Like, she's got, she's developed, like, a, an obsession and a crush for Luffy. Yeah, for I, I do fear that uh, later on it's gonna come back and she's gonna do something about it. I mean, usually, usually I wouldn't Because when think... people are obsessed with other person, male or female, they tend to do drastic things. That's the thing. Usually I wouldn't think twice about a scene like this, but because they showed us that scene and they made it look like creepy, kind of. You know, the, with the lighting, it's in the dark and she's doing it at school. It was, it, it, it was directed weirdly and cre it was creepy, kind of. Because they did that, I feel like you might be right. It's not just... I developed a crush for Yuffie. It's I developed an obsession for Yuffie. And it I might... wouldn't be surprised if in her bedroom she got all posters of Princess Euphemia on yeah, the wall. I, I... Like, cut head of her photos. Right now it's... it's uh, Stick on the wall and stuff. Right now it's harmless. Like, nothing wrong is coming out of this. But um, if it keeps growing, she might do something crazy like kidnap her. Or, I mean, go in places she's not supposed to go. Like trespass in her home go go to her show up at at events she's not supposed to be in like i don't know what she's she can do in the future but it can be cute it can be creepy and it can be dangerous with cookie yes i think it's gonna be creepy and dangerous and yeah cute we have no time for cute so there you go <laughs> even yeah, like uh lulu you, and you did say guys that we will probably hit her in later on it's true that people have mentioned that they hate Nina. Some people say, "Why? Why do you hate Nina? Like she, she's a, uh, she's the best character ever." And I'm like, "Their sarcasm is very, very strong." So, <laughs> um, she might do something. And Yuffie is a very beloved character, so I don't know. But I, I feel like the way they they showed us that, it, it's not just to show us, "Oh yeah, she's developing a crush." No, it's obsession, and it's no. The it crush will be draining her, with their name in it, uh, Nina and Euphemia, City Nina Tree, K I S S I N G. So there is something there. Obviously, it's gonna it's gonna come back for sure. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Orange uh, was declared dead. So well, the, he kind of disappeared on the mountain. So he's hiding somewhere, and 
waiting for his moment to shine? I don't know. I, I think he's too far gone. I swear to God, if he ever finds, if he ever ends up face to face with Lelouch, he's, he knows like that's Zero. He's gonna strangle him to death. He hates him so much. But still. Well, but Zero, it's his prince technically. Yeah, but who cares? He destroyed his career in his yeah. life. <laughs> no, no, he's so, gonna, he's oh, gonna strangle him. The RNG destroyed his career. Because of Zero, Zero mentioned it. Yeah, true. So there's that. So uh, yeah, uh, now they are working with Kyoto. It's, it's a good thing that uh, they knew well. He had to show his face, which is dangerous. But I think it was a but he plan knew move. Him. He knew him, so that's yeah. a good part, a good thing. So knowing him, he also understands now why he's doing this. And I mean, what? Why his identity must stay hidden to yeah. everyone else? That's it. And that's one thing that I'm like, good, good thinking on Lelouch's part, because uh, he thought ahead of uh, how that guy was gonna react. I don't remember his name uh, yet, but still, I'll. It, it will come in the future. But uh, I think yes, it's, it was a very good plan to have C2 basically stand in as himself, and he just shows up like a freaking badass in a nightmare, and he's 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 just very good at this. <laughs> he thinks ahead, and it's great. The only danger here is that when he's, he gets too overconfident. Yeah, but... Every when he's character, overconfident... When they get overconfident, do stuff that they might regret later. Don't, un so, yeah. don't, do not ever underestimate your enemy, yep. which is something that both Lelouch and Cornelia did when facing each other. Because uh, Cornelia won that first time, so she went like, ha ha ha, I have one over you, I'm better than you. And then she fought him at, at Narita and uh, didn't turn out like she, she does planned. She both her arms and her army, so... Yeah, there's that. Didn't uh, think too much about it. But uh, it's a good thing that, uh, once again, like, Lelouch, he's, he's being careful when it matters. He, he won against Cornelia, but he's not, like, uh, doing what he, he, what he used to do at the beginning of the season. Like I'm kind of glad, though, that Suzaku seems okay yeah. after what happened because last time we've seen I saw him in the previous episode he was all shaky and all traumatized. It looks like he, he it's almost like he blocked these memories out. It's almost like he doesn't really remember. It's like it was was it true? Did it actually happen? It's it's like in his mind it was an hallucination. So maybe he was so shocked that he just blocked it all out and he's like, I don't even know if it happened. Maybe. Which means that it could come back. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't know that Lelouch is, uh, was there, ever. Yeah. But he did see C2, though. He never uh, got to see it. Did he actually see her on campus? He might, have, uh, uh, he, might, he might have had a glimpse of her very fast from far away, because I think he saw her on campus once, but he, not enough to recognize her. But he did see her, so if... And Lelouch doesn't know that it was him... In the, the Lancelot, so if, uh, yes. if C2 is not careful and someone sees her, now you've got uh, Karen, who knows, and you've got Suzaku, who knows. So if they ever see her with Lelouch, they will make connections. If they do... Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be interesting. Because surely you know that something happened with Zero and Lelouch and Karen are not there, but she still doesn't make a connection, the connection about it. Come on, girl, it's kind of obvious. Anyway, we'll find out. We're going to move on to the next episode and see what happens. So thank you guys so much for watching this one with us. If you want to see the next one right away, it is already up on Patreon. The link is in the description. So you go down there, guys, and click and you subscribe. And if you don't want to, just wait another week when this one's be up on YouTube. Bye. Yeah, so bye, guys.